Hi guys, so yeah, um, thanks for coming and yeah, thank you for having me. It's um, really nice to be here and I, uh, what a nice thing. So I actually, I grew up here in Ealing and um, it's really nice to kind of come and give a demo of the gloves, which I, li I live in East London now, so I've, I've escaped. But um, yeah, I love it here and it's nice to come back. Um, so yeah, um, I work for Mimi and basically I'm just going to sort of talk a little bit about who we are and what we do. I'm going to show you um, some of the technology we're developing and going to try and make it um, yeah, as interactive as possible and hopefully, you know, hopefully give you guys a bit of a go. So um, sort of starting at the beginning. So, you know, we, 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 our kind of founding kind of uh, instinct is that, you know, the existing ways of interacting with computers um, are too restrictive on the ways uh, for us to, to, to be creative and to, to create things. So um, when, it, when it comes to computers, we've got all this incredible computing power, and particularly within music, we've got this incredible software that's, that's got these amazing algorithms and synthesizers and audio effects and tools and endless, endless software and plugins. But the interfaces to computers are, they create artificial limits to the things that we can create. And basically, you know, we've, we've kind of set out on a journey to create a new way to make music, and I'm going to tell you a bit about why we're going to do that. So I'm going to approach the speaker, and I hope I'm not going to feed back. I'm going to... Okay, good. So... A lot, a lot of music is made on a computer, and uh, you know, uh, you, it's pretty common now. I mean, it didn't used to be, but it's pretty common now. You go to a show and someone's got a laptop on stage and it's running uh, Ableton Live or something like that, or maybe there's a DJ or something. This is now pretty standard at your average show. Um, and you know, as I just said, you know, the, the amazing tools, but but rubbish, rubbish performance uh, tools. They're, they're kind of there's, they're not visual. They're, they're 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 meant for people to sit down and in, to indulge themselves at on their own. Um, and then we've got, you know, the music, music technology industry has spent like a long time trying to make really engaging controllers and we've got these push button things and we've got things that light up and we've got keyboards and, you know, that, and a lot of these are really good, like, you know, Ableton Push is great and all of this stuff, but it kind of has these, this kind of fundamental thing that, that it's, they're all based around the same paradigm. You've got knobs, you've got buttons, and you've got sliders. And maybe someone's got like a, a kind of X Y pad thing, and that's that. You know, but really, like the dimension dimensionality of these things is pretty low, and we don't have the kind of exciting viscerality you have in in, in live performance with acoustic instruments. So, um, yeah. So basically, like we think we need new ways to make uh, to make music with computers, and uh, that's what we set out to do. But basically, I, I want to kind of over egg this a bit and really convince you that this is a problem. So. I've got three reasons that, I'm just trying to remember what my next slide is. I've got three reasons that, uh, that, that we need uh, new ways to make music. So, the first one is that we've got music that people have made now today that just can't be performed. Maybe not necessarily this particular piece of music, but the, there's incredibly complex like automation and kind of mappings and all kinds of stuff that people have done in, in software. And we just have like, that's way ahead of any of the hardware that can possibly render any of that live. So we've just got a complete disconnect between software possibility and like hardware disappointment. I think that's the first thing. So the next thing, so I, I really love watching bands. I grew up playing in bands. Um, I think I formed my first band on the green over there. Um, so um, when I go to watch bands, I watch drummers and like watching someone like physically using their whole body like to play an instrument in this way and just like throw themselves into what they're doing and to just physically perform is such a great thing to watch and I just, you know, it's one of my favorite things. When you see people performing with computers, it often looks like this. They're looking down, they're not engaging with an audience, they're, they're kind of just disappearing into this gear and there's this huge disconnect between the performer on the one hand and the audience on the other and that's a big kind of letdown for everybody. Um, and then the final thing, like, the most exciting thing for me is like, um, there's music that no one has even thought of making because the interfaces we have are just too limited. So we put new interfaces that are more creative, more expressive, and we give them to people, and we're going to get new kinds of music that people haven't even thought of, and that's the most compelling argument for me for new interfaces for music. So um, a few years ago, a little bit sharp, but what, what, this, what we set out and we made um, a new way to interact with computers, and this is um, through some musical gloves. Um, so these are the Mimi gloves, and basically they are a wireless, wearable, gestural, musical instrument and controller. Um, and 
rather than just talk about them, I'm going to sort of show you them with a quick video. Right. So I, I hope you get a feeling that that's just like a more expressive way and dynamic way than like pressing a button or like pushing a slider up and down to kind of control an effect. And so yeah, that's, that's sort of what we're doing. So how do they work? Um, so they have, so they've got flex sensors in the fingers. So they've got, they've, these are kind of like, um, they're sort of this bendable material that um, when you bend it, it produces a different resistance. And then we can read that in, in the kind of, in the, uh, from, based on the electronics that we've got connected to it. So we've got um, eight of these across the hand. We've got one on the thumb, one on the pinky, and then we've got um, sort of two each on, on the kind of longer fingers. And then they sort of sit across the hand giving readings of the, of the movement of, of each finger. So then we've got an IMU, which is an inertial measurement unit. So it's basically measuring uh, orientation. So we, what we can measure through that is, is the roll of your wrist, uh, the kind of uh, pitch, and then also your, so there's sort of these three angles. There's quite a lot more you could potentially do with that, but those are the main things that we are. Um, the gloves communicate via Wi-Fi, so, so basically they have um, all of this data from, from the fingers and then across the, about the, the orientation of the wrist is then sent over OSC. Are people familiar with OSC? So it's using... Um, OSC, which is sent wirelessly over to a uh, computer, which is receiving that, and we'll talk about what happens in a minute. Um, we have, um, I'll show you in a minute when I've, when I've got them on, but basically there's a combined LED and button. So, so the idea of the, 
the LED is that as stuff changes in the software, so you can actually change what you do, and I'll, I'll demonstrate all of this. So you can change the mode, for example, you don't have to go and look at the screen and like completely sort of make null the point of the, the entire thing. The, these show you, so when the color changes, you're like, okay, that's happened, it's worked, I'm now in this completely different mode and I can carry on performing and looking at the audience. So that's what the LED's for. The button's there because there are some things that just need a kind of utility function. So um, you might want to, if you're, okay, so some of the artists, they speak, they're, they're performing, and then they come to the point, they finish the song, they've got reverb all over their voice, they just press that and then the reverb's dead and they can talk to the audience, for example. Like, you don't need a gesture to do that. Um, it's just like a nice, simple thing. There's also another thing that you need to do, which I'll show you a little bit later, but you need to set the direction that's forwards for you. So uh, the gloves know which way north is. I'm not sure which way north is here. I think it's that way. But um, they don't know which way forwards is because that depends on how you're doing. So at the moment, I might be facing here, but I might turn and play a keyboard here, and then forwards is, forwards is, is different. So you can set which way forwards is, and that's quite useful to have that on a kind of simple, like, non-gestural control. Never talked about buttons for such a long time. But, um, okay, so the, the gloves have open palms, basically, because you're on stage and um, it's a bit disgusting, they're quite sweaty. Like, you know, you know when you're under stage lights, it's, it's very hot. Like, that's not really when you want to be wearing gloves, ideally. Um, and then they're fingerless, so, so we have people who play various different instruments with them, because there's a, we have a violinist, people play piano, who play guitar and use the gloves to kind of manipulate those instruments as well as to create, like, this is term augmented instruments. So it's like an instrument with some augmentation on its sound or the way it, it's played or, or something like that. So um, you can change the battery. It's good. Um, oh, yeah, and we have some sort of haptic feedback. It's a vibration motor on, on, the, on the back of the hand. And again, this is used to give you notifications of various different things that are happening in the software. And this is all programmable. So then comes the software. So um, I always feel like this is a good point that rather than uh, do this, is I, it's, I'm just going to sort of give, give you a demo. But I think rather than um, I'm trying to keep away from the speaker. So yeah, rather than uh, me put them on, I've, I've put them on many times. Is there someone else who'd like to put them on? And then I can, I can, we can do a demo that way. And I can also talk through how everything works. Sure, yeah, come down. I mean, we can do we can do more than one. I think I'm gonna now just I'm gonna come behind the here. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come behind here. So turn these on. So that is a right glove. So, so the, the point of the software is so that, um, as well as just being able to you know, connect to other things, um, this is the place where a musician can compose uh, using gesture. So they can, they can take whatever movements and gestures they have and then create compositions of those gestures and then use them to control specific mappings. And then they can create collections of those mappings and then they can switch between collections of those mappings and then they can save this as a project and it's their entire way to, to interface with music software uh, through gesture. And um, so yeah, you'll need to do the strap up there. So, and it, it comes with a few, just put that through there yep. and kind of pull it tight. And so the idea of that is, um, so, so the, the Glover doesn't make any, it's called Glover. It doesn't make any, um, do you want to put that one on as well? Oh, yeah. sure. So it doesn't make any sound on its own. So its job is to interface with music software, music hardware, and basically, like at, at the fundamental, anything that can uh, listen to or be assigned with using either MIDI or OSC can be used in conjunction with this. So that's, um, yeah, loads of music software, but you can also send it out to MIDI hardware, and then you can also um, send it to something like Unity or control visual projections or something. So it's, you know, it's pretty much, if you can send data at it, then, then we can do something cool with it. Cool, so what, what we've got here, I'm gonna sort of talk you through a bit of a setup. So I'm gonna go behind the speaker. So on, you've got your left glove here, and now down the bottom here, this is all, all of your finger movement that's happening. And then so if you're, um, what we'll do first, I think, 
But we'll talk through it. So here you've got the bend of your fingers. And here we've got orientation. So if you roll your left wrist, you'll see this, this roll parameter move. And then if you roll it back, it'll kind of come around. This is, this is pitch, so this is this angle. If you bring it up and down like this, yeah, you've got pitch. And then we, we need to now set which way forwards is. So um, I'm trying to remember which way I did it in this software. Yeah, I think if the, right, the button on the right glove, so here, there's a button. Can you see that here? Yep. Yeah, so press that with your thumb, and if you face a certain direction, you'll watch that. Oh, see that snapped into the middle? Raise yeah. So basically, that snaps into the middle. That would be the right. Yeah, so set, set forwards that way now. So that's now forwards. And so now we've got our frame of reference. Um, and then here we've got posture recognition. So what this is, is um, I'll come up the way. So this, this is some machine learning. So basically what it's doing is taking the flex sensor values. We've got these eight, these eight sensor values here. And then it's basically allowing us to recognize different postures. So maybe a fist or an open hand or a one finger point or really any posture you want to teach it. So um, everyone's hands are different. So if we're very lucky, this will just already be working. This is set up with my hand. So if you, if you make a fist with your left hand, and an open hand, and a one finger point, let's see. Yeah, so it's actually set up nicely. Um, but let's see how the right one is, and if not, we'll, we'll train it so I can show you. So we're gonna check out the right glove now. So, um, it works as well. Sorry? It works as well. It works as well. Well, that, well let's, let's, let's get rid of it, because um, I, want, I want you guys to see. So the way we train it is like this. So if you make a, if you make a fist and hold it, I give it basically some examples of a fist. So if you make an open hand now, give it some examples there. And then if you do a one finger point, and remember if you've got your thumb inside or outside, so I give it those examples. So if I save that now, so that, that will just remember now what, what we've taught it. Yeah, yeah. So we can teach up to nine postures per hand. And, um, yeah, they don't have to be the same postures if you want to have different ones, but that takes a lot of memorizing. So um, let's do a bit of a demo. So on the, on the left, on your left glove, you've got a button as well. So press that. Now you'll notice now that the LED colors changed. Now we've switched here behind you. We've switched in a mode, into a mode. So what's happening now, we're in one of these mappings. I'll show you how they're built in a minute, but I'll just, if we just do it. So if you make a fist with your right hand, that plays a chord, you can let go. So we, and then here you've got a different chord pointing up. Yeah, and then out to the side, you've got one here, and you've got one down here. And with your left hand, if you roll your wrist, you've got control over the, it's like this, this one. So your left hand, if you make a one finger point with your left hand, uh, left hand, you've now got some of these. Yeah, pull that up and down. Oh, no, with, your, with your left hand. So yeah, with, with, with the left hand, now pull, pull, pull that up and down. You have yeah, this kind of bell thing. Yeah. And you can kind of let go. So then, what we can do now, so if you point one, both one fingers up forwards like this, and then you just go like this. So now what happens is we've now switched mode again. If you look at your LEDs, so now we switched, we switched up what they're doing now. So they're in a different mode. So in this one, if you put your hands flat, um, then you can kind of, each finger is kind of mapped to a separate note, kind of. So if you put, pull them quite in quite, quite a lot, like, yeah, so like this. But the idea is not really to play a melody. So if the idea is to, if you, if you actually do this, Pull them in like that, and then pull your wrists around like this. So, but do it, do it all in one sharp action, right? So, so but bring bring a flat again. So if you go like this and pull them around, okay. So now those notes now feed into an infinite reverb. And if you make a one finger point on the right hand, you can kind of control like the brightness of it there. And when you bring your hands flat again, and it all, it all kind of goes away. And so yeah, that's uh, that's sort of um, that's a couple of demos for now. So what I'm going to do, I think, is, is carry on a little bit, and then I'm going to show you guys a bit about how, like how how the, how the, how they're um, how we build new things, and then we can maybe just build something together, like going let's map that to map, and then have some fun. Uh, cool. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yes. Yeah.
Okay, so coming back to this, so I was going to talk a little bit about kind of how we got here. Yeah. So yeah, the, the glove started with a musician called Imogen Heap, and really around 2011-ish, so she was, if anyone's seen her perform, she's got loads of different gear on stage, and she's incredibly creative and got way more ideas than she does time. Um, and she's just got all of this crazy stuff everywhere and she just really wanted this way to be able to access all the stuff she's performing on stage in an instant, really direct way. And um, she, you know, she came up with this idea that she could... Um, it, by the way, I mean, people have been making gloves to make music for a very long time, right, going way back, I think... I mean, the, the theremin is not... There's not gloves, but the, the concept is there. I mean, in, within the 1980s, uh, people were making gloves at Stein in, 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 in the Netherlands and... There's a long history of that. Um, there's a fantastic artist called Letitia Tsunami uh, who was make, performing with these incredible gloves in, in, the, in the 90s. So this is not like a new, uh, like a new, new thing, but she realised that, that you know, for her, this was, this was going to be the way that she could transform her um, show into something you know, in, you know, really, really incredible. And um, uh, what she did, she, she pulled a team of people around her. She got in touch with... Um, a guy called Tom Mitchell, who's at the University of West England, which I have to, which is near Bristol, and um, they, you know, they started working on initially this this glove called a five DT glove. It's a it's a commercial data glove, and they just started trying to program it a bit, basically, and see what happens. And then um, a guy called Seb got involved, and he built these sensors to sort of sit on the wrist because they didn't measure any kind of orientation. So um, after a while, we kind of realised that. We needed more people, and I, I, I got involved as well as Kelly Snook there, and um, we realised we need to have our, our own gloves. We had a, um, a Hannah Perna Wilson came in to build textiles for it. We started actually building physical gloves with sensors that were completely our own, um, plus um, sort of the software side of it. And we were sort of basically, Imogen had this idea she was going to perform in her garden uh, in this sort of geodesic dome on, in, on the internet, and we, we had like two months to make this happen, and we just stayed up. It was like this, non-stop, just all night kind of soldering and getting things to happen and then eventually we kind of did this performance and it was you know really really exciting but by the time we did it um this was sorry this was the, the thing at the time it was kind of this whole body suit that kind of it took we had to all put it on onto Imogen and kind of um yeah make sure everything was working and it used bluetooth which we now discover is unworkable in a kind of stage situation we'll talk about that later. um and uh, it was just much more complicated setup, but we realised that the feedback we got from people was just really incredible. And we, we then um, this, oh, this was the software then. So basically, it's just it's, it's a Max MSP patch, and it was just every option. This is like a fifth of it, and it's just every possible option available at once. So which is not ideal. Um, we went through a whole bunch of different um, design evolutions, and um, then in, we, we went in 2013. We went to Berlin. And we just spent a week with all these people. Just we, we, we took six or seven pairs of gloves there. And just the feedback and the different ideas we got from people and the way that they kind of engaged with, with the idea and, and fed into it, just, just we saw that just this huge like, um, you know, desire from people to kind of put this and use it in their own music in some way. So um, I don't want to run out of time, so I'm going to just move on a little bit. Fast forward a little bit. So, so basically... Come 2014, we ended up making 15 pairs of gloves available to other people, and they, they were our first kind of users, I guess. And they came, we did, spent sort of two weeks making their gloves, and then they came and we did a big workshop with them in, in London. Um, and since, since, since this point, well, but let's, let's kind of chrono chronologically, between that, that point, 2014, up to about 2016, 17, we had, a, we had a, built up a group of about 30 people who were using the gloves in, around, um, you know, in different, different, different places. And... Um, I, th I believe, yeah, we've got, got a couple of videos now of, of some of these people, so I'm going to sort of show you um, some, some, some of these artists. So, Oh, yeah, I, I always talk about Imogen quite a lot, and 
um, but we don't often show videos of her quite a lot, which it, but um, she's really incredible, so let's show a little bit of this. So, yeah, so I'm going to sing you a song, but first of all, I'm just going to demonstrate. Um, I, I won't go into too much detail, but I've essentially got different scenes in here. Um, so you can, like, have different mappings that will access different things inside my software. So basically, um, right now, I am going to just, like, do this, and then um, I am recording my voice. Do this, and then... Um, so I I've made a loop. Recording my voice. Like, and do this. You might hear it's a bit over there. Um, I am recording my voice. And a bit over there. And then um, I am recording. Um, and then I'm going to delete that just by dropping my hand, so it's not there anymore. But I can record it again. I can record it again. And it's gone. Um, and so uh, when I, I often do this, and I actually did it in, in when we were rehearsing, and I forgot that I didn't have my gloves on, and I, st I still did this movement, which has become second nature. So when I want a reverb, I go into secret finger. Um, and then over here, secret finger is, is zero. And when I go over here, got a really long reverb. And I've got reverse. Um, on my right yeah, hand. On my right hand. Oh, right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Doesn't really sound like right hand. Anyway, um, so there we go. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna play you a song. I'm gonna play you a song with my gloves. In the, in the name of time constraints, this is a, like it's an eight or nine minute video, and I won't I won't play it all here, but that, that's on the internet. So this is Ralph Schmidt. He's he's he's, he's um, uses the gloves with two back to back pianos, and um, he's got like a sort of augmented reality show. It's really really cool. But I'll show you a quick quick clip of him. So then um, there's Chris, Chris Halpin. So Chris Halpin's, um, uh, yeah, really, really uh, awesome musician. Um, he's um, you sort of been using the gloves uh, now since, yeah, since 2014. So his, in, his, his background has a, a sort of a, 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 another story with it, which is that, so Chris is a guitarist, but he also um, is a guitarist with cerebral palsy. And that's affected the way that he's able to perform as a musician. So. Um, he can still play guitar, but then on certain days his condition means that he can't play like as well. So he couldn't do a tour, for example, because he might end up at a venue and just be like, I can't do today. Um, and what what's basically happened with Chris is and he's he's uh, you know, basically started working with the gloves and that's transformed his way that, that he's able to sort of act as a musician. Um, and he's now basically performing uh, and making music full time, like as a, as a musician and touring and doing all kinds of stuff. And it's been really uh, transformational. And I'm gonna, I've got two videos here, but I'm gonna just take the second one of him.
And then, um, there's, so Chagall, Chagall's part of our team as well, and she's just she's an amazing musician. Um, and the video I'm about to show you actually really does no justice to her her, her current work, which is mind blowing. Um, but Chagall's been, um, as well as performing all of her music with the gloves, she also um, controls the visuals that are projected on her on the screen behind her. So she's got all of the the, the sort of uh, audio visual connection and and movement thing. I mean, at the moment. What she's doing. Well, I'll, talk, I'll show you a video and then I'll talk about what she's doing at the moment. She's basically controlling all of that behind her. I mean, what she's doing at the moment, so she's got actually, it's, it's like so much more gone. Th th that was about three or four years ago and, and it's come so much more advanced. She's, she has a whole bodysuit now as well. Which, so, and that's controlling this stuff, which is all programmed in Unity, where she's got these several avatars of herself, which are kind of um, representing her also on, on the thing. It's completely um, crazy. I mean, she, she's... Um, I think it's the 24th of February, it's in, it's in um, the Netherlands, but if anyone's there, then definitely go and see that show. It's gonna be great. Um, so I thought, now, we could, if, if anyone else wants to have a bit of a go, but I thought I'd show how we build a new thing, just so that, that so you can see a bit of how the software works in terms of, in the creative process. Is there, is there anyone else you'd like a, to have a go with them? Sure, yeah. Someone down. Yeah, so that's a right glove. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, I did one thing I I missed out. So, um, what we're doing now? So we actually um. In our sort of chronology of things, we, we we last year we released a brand new design, which is this, and it's like been years of like research into how to make it easier to make these. It's still incredibly difficult, um, but we've we've done certain things. So we got a grant from the EU to make um, a sort of sustainable manufacturing process for the textile. So there's there's uh, this is now all made in Leicester, the textile, and it comes to us, and we do the insertion of the sensors and a lot of the electronic side of it. So um, we've got a nice sort of this case on the wrist now, which is. Um, kind of houses all the electronics. So it's, we've come quite a long way in the design. And we've now got, we just had 75 new users. So they really only have had them for about five, six weeks. But there's this huge group of people that keep emailing me about their, got, they've got ballet shows and they're doing pirouettes and or there's people using them to try and, um, for speech, basically. And there's all kinds of different applications. So over this next year, we just really can't wait to see what, what different artists um, Kind of use them for, I guess. Yeah, so she's oh, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> just in there. So, right, I'm going to talk through the software. Um, so, let's go down here. So, you'll see here there's sort of nothing, nothing in the software here at all. Mm -hmm. And then up the top here, I've got these buttons. So, I'm going to press this button I. And um, what this does is it creates a mapping input. And the mapping input probably deserves a better name. What, what, it, what it actually is, is, is it, it's, it's, um, it's a gesture. So basically, it's a way you can, you can create some combination of movements. So I'm, I'm going to demonstrate that. I think this wants to be a little bit, yeah. a little bit tighter. Hang on. Which one? That's all right, yeah. yeah. That's, um, I think we've gone, gone, in, way, gone in the wrong way. There we go. Yeah. Ooh, is that one OK? Is that one? Oh. Yeah, so I think. That's that's all right. That Good. <laughs> okay, so if you, if you, so what I'm going to do on on down here, we, we can see we've got our two gloves. So I'm going to click on the left glove here, and click on orientation, and, and there's pitch here, which is like this action. 
it's like this, that one. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag and drop that into this uh, mapping input. And then you can see now we've got this signal coming in. So it's, so it's, it's, it's actually, if you think about the sensors on the wrist, it's the angle of that, that yeah. sensor. So you think about the, the angle of your wrist like yeah, that. Yeah. Just that. Like, like, like this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, like that. There we go. So you have that kind, of move, that kind of movement. And so we can set, we can, we can choose where we want this to go. So what, what, like, where would be the minimum, where's the minimum you want this control to go to? Like, like you can say, okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty so we, can, we can set that, that's the minimum, and where would you want the max to be? Uh, yeah. Right, okay, so right, full range, right? So then put it, put it all, pull it all the way to the top, and we can set, set that as the max, okay. But if you wanted to have a more constri constrained range, then you can, you can choose that. So um, then what we do, so we've got, we've, got, we've got our gesture at the moment, this is this, is this one. Then we can click on this O button here, and then that creates a mapping output, okay? And in here, we've got all kinds of different uh, outputs, MIDI and OSC, and a few other ones as well. But I'm going to drag a MIDI message in here. Um, if you're not familiar with these, I wouldn't worry too much, but because it is, it is quite easy to understand after time. And then basically, I just connect these together, and now that, that gesture control is sending that MIDI message. Um, so we can go now. Uh, let's start a new Ableton project. Um, and what we can do, I'm going to take um, I'm going to take a cheesy drum loop. Let's just see if I can turn this down. Wow, it's really loud. Okay. And so what we're going to do um, is we're going to we're basically going to control uh, some rev like some reverb on this drum loop, right? So we've got here this decay time parameter. And because we've got this, this MIDI message, this channel eight um, controller 21, which is, which is sending out here, um, like Ableton's listening out for, for whatever controllers are being sent. And so I can go in here and I can just map that there. And you can see it says 821 now. It's, I've gone into the MIDI mapping mode. And then I, I come out of there. And now when you move your hand up and down, you're controlling this, the decay time of this parameter, right? So if we play the, if we play the loop, like you basically, you bring it on. So this is fun, but but kind of we have a problem, right? So if you if you can turn turn and face people a second. So so the problem here is that we're controlling this reverb, but we have no way to like stop controlling it. And it's and as soon as it, we're like constantly uh, controlling this thing, and we've no way to say, oh, I really want to stop doing this because it's not what I want to do anymore. So our solution to that is that we also have postures, which we, I think we showed in in the gloves. So we can now uh, open up this this mapping input that we created. And I can drag, just drag in fist here, for example, which is a posture. And now you'll see that the line stops moving completely. And then when you make a fist, it will start again. And you move it to where you want it to, want it to be, and then you can let go. And, and now we have a control that we can access and that will also disappear. Can everyone, can everyone see that? So, great. so now if we, if, we, if we go back and play our, play our drum loop again, so you, you can like, yeah, keep it low and then let, and then kind of like, you can bring it all the way down. Yeah, and then if you move your hand otherwise, you've got nothing, yeah. So, there's one other thing. Wow, that's some big one. We have this reset on release parameter, so this is like, as soon as you let go of the posture, that will change the, the reverb back to some, some parameter, so it's back to zero in this case. So now, you can bring it all the way up to the top, and let go. So you've now got this parameter. I mean, there are a lot more features in, in, in the software, but that, that's the core principle of it, really, which is that you build these gestures. And I mean, just to show you one more thing, they can go, we can add more, more conditions. So we can say that <clears throat> your right hand has to be, uh, oh, no, not, your right hand has to be pointing down, for example, right? So now if you keep your right hand, like, just level, like this, and then try and make a fist with your left hand, like, we get no movement here. And as soon as your right hand points down as well, then we get that, 
that combination. So you can you can add con condition after condition after condition to kind of make sure that you can segment certain movements and and have them separated from other movements so that you can really you know go and access a certain control in quite a complicated way. And it, at the beginning you're like oh what right hand down and and that there, but after a while it becomes muscle memory and then it's like performing with pretty much any other instrument. Um, wow. So, so we have a couple more things. I, I won't go into detail now, but we have um, something called the chord machine. And basically, I can, I can program a chord in here, and I can just then drag a, drag a gesture in that will play that chord. It's pretty simple. And you can have 12 chords in each and um, just map different gestures to them. So that's a way for you to sort of play chords. We have... Um, called the note matrix this is basically you, you you can write a melody along along the keyboard there and then you can use a gesture to play through that melody in a certain way um there's a whole load of other stuff but i won't because I'm, I'm short of time now but but basically um we can control the, the lights we control the, the 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 vibration motors the buttons and all of this becomes programmable uh, the final thing i'll say is that i've seen if we if this became our like drum loop reverb thing, right? That becomes a scene. As soon as I leave one of those and go somewhere else, the controls no longer exist, right? The gloves don't do that anymore. So what you can do is build up a number of these scenes and they become kind of like presets and you can move through them during a performance. And so, yeah. Anyway, I think what I'm gonna do is, is wrap up now and just see if you guys got any questions. And yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>